In this episode of Joe Ketchapalia talks about building a shipping container home, uh, we're going to cover some metal work because that's pretty much the only thing happening right now. Um, if you watched my last video, you know that we are still dealing with issues with the foundation plan, and that is basically holding up the whole permitting process. Um, so we're still working on these containers offsite, uh, a little bit limited. We're trying to figure out what things we can and can't do. Um, I'm going to just show you a little bit of little bit of an update on what we have going on. Uh, if I can get this to work, yep, here we go. Um, you can see we have all the caps now welded on the front. Um, that process took a lot more welding hours than I expected, and so I don't think I'll be doing that in future container home builds. Um, you can see here. We're cutting out huge sections because this wall one is going to go against here. They're actually leaving this middle piece in for support. So when we're transporting it, it'll give it a little bit of rigidity. Um, you know, normally that's what this whole side wall is for, but you don't need the whole thing if you don't have, you know, these are meant to be stacked nine high um, or up to nine high. You know, so, you know, there's a lot of strength there, but they, they're just leaving a little piece in there. Uh, just so you don't get a bow in that, you know, a little bend in that top bar. Um, I thought this was interesting. They they put up a diagram on the site so that they know where to cut and where not to. Um, as I mentioned, this is taking a, just a lot more hours than I expected. Um, the big thing, you know, is is uh, when they're grinding down this bottom because, you know, one of the things we're just going to have exposed floors here. And so this really needs to be smooth because this, this metal piece is going to be exposed as well, um, you know, thinking about reusing the floors that was partially cost and, and partially I just you know don't want to use additional materials if we don't have to um, you know I like the the idea of just the, the reclaimed materials uh, but the number of man hours going into it uh, has been sort of eye-opening even you know my builders have have dealt with this before but I think this is you know going even a little slower than they expected um, because in other times they've they've used flooring and covered this up, and so they they weren't thinking about making it as as uh, smooth of an edge as as what we have to have on the bottom there. Um, this was sort of interesting. I have uh, very just uh, resourceful builders. Uh, they went and traded some of the metal pieces that they cut out for some of, at a scrapyard for some of these support beams. Um, and yes, you know, there's some surface rust on those right now, but they're, they're going to work perfectly fine um, for what we're going to do. Where we have, you know, I mentioned that that piece is in there for support. Um, it's, you know, both sidewalls of the two containers that are being pushed together, are got, that interior sidewall is going to be missing. And so we're going to use some of those steel, um, you know, braces basically across the top. To, to give it some extra support where we have that long span that doesn't have any anything once those sides are cut out. I think this is interesting. You can kind of start to see, at least I, I can when I'm in there, um, start to picture what's going to be happening. Uh, that little piece of framing that I walked through, this is going to be one of the back walls here. And then this is all open. So this is going to be like a little, you know, outside porch area. We're going to put metal on this wall we're not going to weld it like we did with those front caps um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to be interior. You know, it's already going to be covered up, so we don't need it. I mean, it will be watertight, but it doesn't need to, you know, we don't need that same level that we need in that front there. Um, this piece is going to be taken out, and so then you can get into the other side. Uh, and then, uh, you know, my my builder on site, he he's getting a little bit creative. Um, you know, we were supposed to have both end caps just totally cut off. And then, uh, you know, that one I just showed you is going to have a small deck in front of it. And then this one was supposed to have just like a wire cable fence across here. That's what's showing in the plans. Uh, but he just left this bottom piece. Um, and, you know, I thought I, I kind of like that. And his thought was, you know, we can make just a, a nice little bar top right here. Um, and I sort of love that idea. And that's, you know, we don't need any additional support between the metal that's there and um, the side pieces, you know, it, there's nothing that we have to do. So it was actually a matter of they did less cutting to get that out because you didn't have to cut down those side pieces. And it, and it does, you know, it's not really saving us a ton of time, 
But why cut it out and then go back and put um, those cables there if you can leave it and leave it as support for a bar top? And I, you know, I thought that'll be pretty great. If you remember, this is just going to be facing the back of the lot sort of into the trees. Um, so this, you know, you can sit on the deck here. You can, you know, we'll probably put some chairs inside this little covered area. But then this will, this will be a nice little bar area as well. Um, so really starting to see, you know, some of this, you know, coming together a little bit. Um, one of the big discussions that we had is, you know, what are we going to do about the window and door frames? How are we going to waterproof them? Um, and so I, I just thought I'd show you a couple examples of how other people have done it and then what we've decided we're going to do. Uh, this is how I see it most often. Basically, they just either metal or wooden framing around the window. They just, you know, pop it right in, um, paint it. You know, one of the things when you're doing this, depending on, how, you know, if it, especially if it's metal, then you, you want to weld that whole seam. Um, or, or if it's wood, they're, they're putting caulking on top. Um, waterproofing for these becomes a little bit of a problem because you have, the, you know, where the indents and the corrugated steel is, uh, you know, you have a, a couple of spots where, where water, um, you know, could start to uh, cool up. And, you know, if you're if your seams aren't perfect, then you know you might start getting water in the home, and so that's that's you know the big worry. Uh, so much so that I've seen some of these. A lot of people are, and this is, geez, I didn't realize how blurry this was when I was looking at it in in this uh, before. But you know they're they're basically welding on this little drip edge over each window and door. Um, now this one is just on a on an end part where the door is, and so it doesn't have you know they don't have the corrugated deal to deal with. Um, here's one where they did, and it's a little bit more of an issue. And this, these ones actually did both. They, they framed around the window and then put that corrugated metal. They used it as a little drip edge up there. Um, I'd love to be able to do that, but all this extra metal work, I'm just realizing it's, it's so many hours of work. Um, it is a pretty cool end result. And again, I apologize for how, how blurry that picture is. I don't know I don't know why I was looking at this on a smaller screen earlier. Um, but so what we decided to do is is sort of um, along that same idea, but not not quite. So we're going to frame the edges and we're going to use we're going to use treated lumber. Um, but then uh, we're leaving this, you know, this little slot in here where we'll then take um, it'll be wood that's this this dimension, but obviously the whole length of it. Um, and it'll be at a, at a slight angle, kind of like how that drip edge was. And, um, so, so basically it's, you know, going to achieve sort of that same look a little bit, uh, but with just having to cut and then using the wood and then we'll use, um, a caulk, uh, in that, you know, along that seam. Um, but because this is going to be inserted up at an angle underneath the metal here, it shouldn't allow any water to get back inside of there. Um, you know, it's a it's a much more cost effective solution just from a man hours standpoint. Um, not you know not having to. I'm sure I'm I'm probably bordering on whining about how much uh, welding costs at this point. But you know it is it it's becoming a bigger line item in our budget than I expected. Um, and so we're trying to figure out little spots how to avoid it on here. Um, and then I think about, I talked about on the, on the tiny home plans that I'm working on, we're really trying to tackle that on the front end from a, from that perspective, um, minimizing the metal work while still really using the container to its fullest. Um, but so for here, I think this was a pretty good solution, um, you know, to, to just frame around it and to, and to use the, you know, and I know this isn't a, you can't maybe picture it if you're, if you're not good at visualizing things like that. Uh, but it, you know, I think, I think it's going to work well. Um, you know, only, only time will tell a lot of these things I've, I've thought would go, you know, a little bit smoother. Um, but they had, they had actually put this stuff up there when I was there to, to look at, and we we're uh, looking at some different options. And I, you know, this is the one we went with. And I think, um, it should come out well. And if not, the, the good thing is, again, uh, it's a, it's not quite as permanent of a solution as if we did just go and, and weld drip edges on all these. Uh, you know, there's, there's not a lot of going back from that. 
Um, and so that's, you know, that, that's what we came up with and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, if you've made it this far in the video, I'm impressed with your um, commitment to, you know, learning about building shipping containers. Hopefully we're going to have some real progress starting soon where you'll see a little bit more. I can't wait. I'm hoping to film when we move these containers onto the site. Uh, my contractor is really confident he can just move these around with a forklift um, and put them on, you know, once we get the foundation in, once, even though we, you know, they're all cut up and everything. And so I, I really, you know, I'm both excited and nervous for that day. Uh, but so hopefully that's going to be coming up in the next week or two if, if we can get uh, this, this foundation plan issue worked out and get our permit to get over there. Um, we are doing some cleanup at the site too. Maybe I'll go over there and just show you that. Uh, you know, if you remember, we have a, a really nice tree lot, um, but it's not, you know, we're going to try to not cut down very many trees. But, you know, if you can imagine moving these big containers around in an area with a lot of trees is, is, is going to be a challenge. So um, that should be coming up. Uh, and I should have another um, another version of the plans for the tiny home also uh, later this week. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, I do appreciate everybody that's been commenting and liking and, and sharing them on your own platform. Um, that, that's kind of exciting. I've got some people watching now other than just my friends and family and Please do, you know, if you're my friends and family, please keep watching because, you know, I, it's actually a fun thing to be able to talk about uh, when I'm talking to a lot of you. Uh, and uh, but also, you know, please keep sharing that because it's it's been exciting to see that, uh, you know, there's some other people that are involved in this industry have, have reached out and talked to me and sharing plans. Um, and so, that, that, you know, that's really what I'm hoping to get out of this, to be able to help other people that are trying to do the same kind of project get other ideas from people and that sort of thing. Um, you know, obviously this is a, a work in progress and I'm just learning a lot as it goes. Uh, but until next time, I will keep making mistakes so you don't have to.